All right, well, the Cobalt has its coilovers installed. It's looking good. Car is <laughs> more than a little dirty right now. We had a little bit of rain come through and hadn't had rain in a while, so all the trees just kind of puked everything up. But a little bit of wintry mix coming in the next day or so, but we will uh, we'll get these things cleaned up. But anyway, so this is the Cobalt in its current condition. I'll try to get down a little bit. And not sure how well that's showing, but I've driven it just a little bit around town here. Um, these tires are junk, so we're going to take care of that shortly. But um, do need to get alignment. But as it sits, it's relatively level. It's still got that about one inch, three quarters of an inch, whatever it may be, um, gap from the top of the tire of the fender. They're roughly 25 inches all the way around from ground to uh, top of fender the right rear always ends up being a tiny bit higher for some reason really not sure why but uh we'll see if that settles, settles a little bit more and based on my last video this is a zz performance coilover kit unfortunately the way i installed it i don't have any adjustability in the back because i just put the spring in so kind of stuck with that fronts have infinite adjustability so it can kind of do whatever but anyway speaking of tires taking care of that with these over here um these are some firestone firehawk indy 500 um at this point a little bit of an older tire design he's been around for a while there's definitely better options i would say um 235 40 18 is uh the size these cars came with 225 4018s, but I typically put 235s on. I think it fits the wheel better and also gives it just a tiny bit more height. Um, that's what's currently on here. These are old Falcons, good tire, but this thing absolutely eats front tires. So you got to be very careful and rotate. And you're, I mean, you're going to get maybe 15 to 20,000 miles if you're lucky out of these. 15, I don't know. That's probably about it. Even with rotating, the rears can go forever, but the fronts just get destroyed. So anyway, got a really good deal on these. Um, I think they retail like tire rack for almost 200 bucks a tire for this size. I think they're like 190. I actually got these to my door, 80 bucks a tire. I think I might even be less than that, 78 or whatever. But basically these are a couple years old. Uh, these are two-year-old tires uh but new so they were just in the factory for a couple of years or in the warehouse i should say um and be, so i just got a big discount on them um you know you gotta be careful when you do that especially with the performance tire because after so many years the rubber just gets harder uh but in this case <laughs> these tires are gonna last maybe a couple years anyway just the way this tire this car goes through them so less than half the price instead of this almost being eight hundred dollars 760 plus whatever fees they throw on top of that it was less than 360 to my door so pretty good deal we'll get these on here take care of that at that point i'm gonna say suspensions kind of done or at least for now uh except for the rear sway bar or anti sway bar roll bar anti roll bar whatever you want to call it and i did not realize but Cobalts, as far as I can tell, do not have a rear sway bar or anti-sway, whatever I call it. Um, all these cars have the, I don't know what the official term is, beam style rear suspension. So they're kind of like semi-independent. It's not truly an independent rear suspension. Um, but somehow they make it work in these cars because these were and probably still are some of the best handling small cars out there. So, I don't know, GM figured something out. But, you can always make it better. Um, and that is, this is ZZP, uh, again, their rear sway bar kit. And honestly, it's almost like a beam stiffener in a way, the way that suspension works. All you really do is, and I think I have this laid out correctly, this is how it goes underneath the car. And it goes underneath that beam, there's some kind of suspension little... We'll see when we get under there. But uh, there should be some kind of, probably where the spring sits here, I imagine. A piece of metal where you slide this piece in. So this sits in between. 
and then you just put the bolts in from underneath um shouldn't have to take the wheels off shouldn't have to do anything really just jack the car up i might throw them on these little ramps it's just as easy to jack them up throw on there just for a little room smart thing would have been to do all this before i lowered the car but eh, let's make it more difficult so anyway let's get this uh let's get this thing on there all right it's a little tight under here but i got the car jacked up and uh this is the excuse me this is the weird uh trailing arm ish beam style rear suspension so basically hopefully sorry i'm moving around here hopefully you can see it so basically there's a mounting point in front of the rear wheel right there to the chassis or the unibody then you have kind of a the equivalent of a trailing arm going down to basically right at the rear axle point where you have your spring and you can see this is the lowering spring coilover combination that i installed so spring fortunately no adjuster and you can see the shot the adjustable shock over there but anyway that's the um uh what do you want to call it that's the coilover kit and the this would be the passenger side rear suspension then there's this beam that connects to the mirror opposite on the driver's side the weird thing is, sorry if I'm a little difficult to see here, there is a bar in there. So, oh gosh, very little room. Anyway, just moving around. This bar, I think maybe does act as a sway bar of some kind, but it's actually welded in on the backside over here. So I wonder if they have different versions that they use for different cars. I don't know. But anyway, I have the new bar down here. And it's going to be difficult to show installing it. So the next little piece will probably be already installed. But basically, going back down to here, these two holes are where the bar, which is going to run like this, mount up to. You slide the little bracket inside here, and then you put those two in, and that should be it. So it's going to, if this is a sway bar of some kind, it's just going to be adding almost like a second. So anyway... A little tight but uh we got it jacked up so we'll get this on and then uh we'll see what it looks like all right well there it is this way we're installed a couple of bolts on either side and it's in tightened to torque specs of whatever um <laughs> but yeah hangs out a little bit lower than i thought but that's probably just to clear the beam uh it still appears to be sitting higher than the exhaust and some other things further up the car so anyway pretty simple you just kind of have to make sure you get that little plate and the little bolts or the nuts that are inside there aligned when you're torquing it down but otherwise it goes in pretty good so i think we're good here all right there it is sway bar installed it's probably of course hey it's dark like everything out here or every time i do something um probably one of the uh easier things you can do i mean literally four volts uh trickiest thing is just making sure the little plate and the the nuts are aligned right and obviously just kind of not having a lot of room if you don't have a lift which probably most people don't so i think we're done so this car is suspension complete i would say tires are kind of part of suspension so if we step back in the light here it doesn't change much but anyway, get these tires on, get in alignment. I think we're good to go. Um, still got a couple things left before the cold weather is here and this thing kind of gets apart for a while. Um, do a couple things with the shifter. I'm going to put a short throw shifter on it. I have springs, bushings, a couple little various things that should make it a little bit better. And it's already pretty good, but we can make it better, especially 100,000 miles or whatever it has uh what am i forgetting oh and then i'm gonna try to get the intercooler and the intercooler piping and all that stuff installed too before the kind of put this thing away so um i think that's it i got the old audi out here you can't really see it in the darkness but not missing much um trying to get that thing cleaned up and probably sell that car but anyway i think that's it for now so i don't know we'll see maybe some more 
Cobalt content coming next. Coming up next, excuse me. Got to get the Jeep fixed up a little bit. Now the cold weather's coming. Lots of other stuff. Still got the race car, some winter projects throughout the winter. So a lot of things coming up here. But I think, uh, I think that's it for now. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.